Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, MakeLab TV. In today's video, I want to show you how to perform the trick that fooled David Copperfield in the show Penn and Teller fool us last year. But first, I need to give you a disclaimer because the way I'm going to show you how to do this trick is not necessarily the way they did it in the show. Okay, this is just uh, my own version of the trick that will give you the same effect at the end. As you know, in magic, there is many, many ways, many different techniques, and at the end, it's the same effect, right? So this is my strategy, my technique to perform this effect that they did to David Copperfield. All right. So uh, the first thing you're gonna need, and we're, I'm gonna play the video at the same time, so we are able to follow. But as you can see, at the beginning, uh, he's not asking David to shuffle the deck. Back where I was, put the other cards on top. It's a gentleman's game. We won't uh, we won't look, but um, uh, don't count too loud. Come down there, and when you get to that point, look at the card. Put it right back where it was, put the other cards on top, if you would, please. And when you're at the top of the deck, put the other cards on top. Put it back on the top of the deck. Yep, the other cards on top. So the deck is given to David Copperfield like this, and uh, he's given instruction to start, and he's not given the instruction to shuffle the deck to start with. What does it mean? It means that uh, the deck is already placed in a specific order, okay? So each card is in a specific order, and in my opinion, it's in the ordered uh, chase. C-H-S-D for club, heart, spade, and diamond, okay? How it works? It works like this. You will start example with, uh, let's say we start with the ace of diamond, on the top of the, the on top of the deck here, okay. So top of the deck, it's the ace of diamond. The next card, okay, because we are diamond D. D is chaste D. Then the next card has to be a club. So the next card will be the four of club because we need to add three, okay. This is if you want to Google this, just type uh, chase C H S D stack deck. They will give you all of the information on how, on how to stack a deck in the chased order. So, Ace of Diamond, Four of Club. The next one, we do Four plus Three. So, the next one will be Seven of Heart. Then, the next one will be Ten of Spades. Then, the next one, I think, will be King of Diamond, and etc., etc. So, it's always plus Three, and it goes to the other suit. You will see... All you have to do is place all of the deck in this specific order. And as you can see in the video, he's asking David Copperfield, okay? So just put cards down on the table, as many as you want. And he does that. Take, look at, take a look at your card. So he's looking at the card, let's say six of spades. Put it back on the deck here. And then put the rest of the card back on top to hide the secret card, all right? But what happened here is that by going there one by one, you reversed the order of the cards. By reversing the order of the cards, the card that will be on top here will be the card that was next to the card they picked. Because the last card that ended up on, on top of, of here, and then going back here, was the card that was next to the Six of Spades. So the key card is now on top. But as you see in the video, Teller is not touching the deck. Nobody's touching the deck. It's all in David's Copperfield's hands at all time, at the beginning. So what happens here is the secret, in my opinion, that's how I would do the trick, okay? What happens is the deck is marked. I know a lot of people are saying that it's impossible that they used a, a mark deck for this. It's impossible because David Copperfield is smart. He would have noticed that right away. You're right, he's smart. But at the same time, they had to outsmart David Copperfield by using a technique that he would not think that they would use because they would think he would catch him. I don't know if you understand me. It's so obvious, it's so easy that David Copperfield 
would not think that they would use a Mark deck. He wouldn't even look for this. You get me? So a Mark deck is a, a deck which on each card, it tells you what the card is. So example here, as you can see uh, right here, we have the Ace of Diamond. Ace of Diamond. Here, we have the Three of Diamond. I don't know if you see it, it's like very small on the corner here. It blends in the card. I'll show you here. I don't know if you can see the Ten of Club. So it's a very subtle way of knowing a card. Okay? So what happened? If you look at the video, David Copperfield is looking at his card, putting back here, and then he put the rest of the card on top. And then they turn around, Penn and Teller, they turn around, and as you can see, Teller, which is not talking at all, is the one sitting next to David Copperfield with the deck next to him. A simple look from the eye, looking at the deck, he now knows what is the card on top of the deck because of the marked deck. He knows which card then he picked because this card that is on top is the card that was next to the guy's card, to David's card. So now he knows which card David picked. Do you follow me? Let me repeat this just quickly, okay? This is a marked deck, there is a stacked deck, okay? He reverse. He puts the cards on the table as many as he wants, pick a card, puts the card there, and then he has to put the rest of the pack on top here. You reverse the card, so now the card is on top, is the card that was next to his card. So by Teller simply looking at it, he knows which card David picked. Now is the other tricky part, is to find David's card very quickly. So, Penn is doing his jokes and everything. Right hand coat pockets. You want to reach in to tell this right hand coat pocket, make sure there's nothing in there, and make sure there's no electronic or anything. Reach, reach in, make sure. Yeah, tell the thought. It's for me. Yeah, tell the thought it might get rough. It looks like it's, it's going to be okay. You're being friendly about it. So, the, the uh, pocket's empty, no electronics. Check that all out. So put the cards in right here. Now, Teller's going to pull the cards out. They are doing a very good job to distract uh, David, right? By making him look in the pocket here for the, the American fist. And during this time, as you can see, Teller has the deck in his hand. All he, all he has to do is find the card David's pick. He knows which card he, he picked because he found out by doing the... The, the stack deck plus the mark deck in his mind, okay, he figured out, okay, this is his card. Alright, so all he has to do, he has about 10 seconds while David is playing in his pocket to just use the fact that the jacket is on the side, go through the deck quickly, find the card, boom, I found the card. Once he found the card that he's looking for, he puts it on top of the deck, alright, and I have to remind you, okay, that once, uh, I forgot to say that they shuff, he shuffled the deck too. So David Copperfield shuffled the deck, he did a bunch of different shuffles, and I believe that he could have shuffled as many times as he wanted. Because with this technique, Teller knew the card already. He knew the card. That was not a problem. He knew the card, so he could have shuffled as many times as he wanted. So. The only thing that Teller had to do was simply look through the deck, quickly find the card, and as soon as he found the card, he puts it on top of the deck, and then he puts the deck inside his pocket, and now that he knows the card, he simply needs to count with David Copperfield in his mind, one by one and put them down on the table. Now, you are not going to read your face or anything, but you spell the card in your head. Each card that goes down, you spell one of the letters, and do spell of. So it's Ace of Spades, A-C-E, O-F, S-P-A-D-E-S. The audience will be doing it along with you, but everybody be quiet. Don't spell it out. He is going to deal the cards out. And as the last card, Spades and S, 
he makes sure that he's going to pick the card on top. So all of this time that he's picking the cards in his pocket, he's taking them from the bottom, right? But when he knows that he's going to get to the last card, he takes the one on, on top, and David Copperfield is going to say, okay, stop. Gets all this Take that card right there at the top, pull it towards you. And very loudly, what was the name of your card? And show it to the four of spades. The four of spades. Show it to the audience. The four of spades. And he stops, and that's exactly the card that he was looking for. To me, it makes a lot of sense. Sometimes it's hard to explain magic because it's some technical stuff, but overall, it's, it's a cool trick. There's a bunch of strategies to use. It's not a simple, simple trick where you can just go like, hey, take a card. Okay, then you just do a force and then you try to guess someone's card. This is a more strategic uh, card trick that, that it had to be used against a, a guy like David Copperfield. And it's great that it was used uh, with Penn and Teller because if they really used a Mark deck, that was very bold, very bold move, if they did. Some people think that they did not use a bold uh, a stack deck. I mean, everyone agrees that they use a stack deck, but not everyone agrees that uh, they used a marked deck. What is your opinion? Do you think they use a marked deck or not? In my opinion, it doesn't really matter how they did it. What matter is that I know how to perform the same effect. You know what I mean? You could have a better strategy and make it way more complicated, but as long as the same effect is at the end, that's what matters. Have a great day, guys. Watch my other videos. See you very soon.